Welcome back to the channel. Today you are going to be coming along with me for a full what I eat in a day. And I am also going to be showing you guys how to make your own homemade sauerkraut. Make sure you keep watching all the way to the end so you can see how to make a salad that doesn't suck. Meal number one is gonna be a protein shake. I'm not a huge advocate for not eating whole foods, but when you're busy and you're doing stuff all day, a quick meal like a protein shake, I think is your best option over not eating or over grabbing something like processed, okay? So I this is my like go-to protein shake. I have a nice um, plant-based protein powder, which I cut in half, and I also substitute with some just PB2, which is um, dried peanuts, essentially. Um, and then I always add in a scoop, a scoop, a scoop of my um, superfood green mix. This has a blend of all these different kinds of greens, as well as an antioxidant blend, as well as a fiber blend, blend and a digestive blend, which has active pro and prebiotics. Um, so I like to add this, especially when I'm not getting a full meal. I wanna make sure I have that in with my smoothie or my shake. And I never add water because, I don't know, it's not as good to me when you just add water. So I add almond milk. And yeah, that was my first meal of the day. Um, I am cashing in at that meal with 245 calories, 22 grams of carbs, eight grams of fat, 21 grams of protein. So this is a really great start to my day. This is also post-workout, so I'm getting a decent amount of protein. Keep watching if you wanna see more food. Okay guys, so I'm gonna do one little cooking session with you guys for this video, and it's just gonna be kinda of like a little mini meal prep. For lunch today, I had no idea what I wanted. What's wrong? I am just going to roast some sweet potatoes. And while I'm roasting those in the oven, I'm also gonna throw in some russet potatoes. I like to keep sweet potatoes on hand. A lot of times I'll cube them up, but today I'm just gonna roast them with the skin on, like just like this, nothing else done to them, just because I want to have the ease of preparation. Um, and then for the potato, the russet potatoes, um, I'm in. Yukons, I'm just gonna throw these in there, skin and all, same thing. And these I'm probably actually gonna use for breakfast tomorrow. Breakfast potatoes, I'm gonna pre-roast them. They probably won't be done all the way because sweet potatoes cook faster, but they'll be ready to just kind of dice up and make um, like hash browns or something like that for breakfast or whatever else. Um, and once I finish that, I'm gonna show you guys how I make my sauerkraut. So this is a staple that I like to put on just about everything, especially since I have been trying to get over what I have self-diagnosed as adrenal fatigue. If you want to watch that video of me explaining my adrenal fatigue symptoms, it'll be linked up above. Um, but yeah, so let's make some sauerkraut after we get these potatoes in the oven. The first step to making kraut is you're just going to slice up your cabbage. Um, I don't have any like specific size. It's all preference here. You can do bigger chunks if you want to, but I feel like it takes a lot longer to firm it. So I like to th slice it as thinly as possible. You better be composting that extra stuff. And then you're going to take and you're just going to squeeze it, massage it. I actually have this little, I don't, there's a name for this tool. I cannot remember, but it looks like a little wooden mallet type thing. I have this, I'm going to just kind of like not like beat it, but just kind of like push it and kind of get some of the juices to extract. In the meantime, you also have added a little bit of salt to that as well, just to kind of help pull those liquids out. And then this is where I have learned so much. A lot of recipes um, when you're making kraut will tell you like, just use the juice from the cabbage and make sure it's submerged. For years, I kept trying to make this and it would not turn out right. Well, that's because I keep buying store-bought cabbage and depending on how old it is, it doesn't really excrete that much juice. So I started making a brine, okay? And all you're trying to do with this brine is make sure that the kraut is covered in water during the fermentation process. And what this is going to do, it's gonna keep all the bacteria 
from touching your kraut at all. It kept my cabbage also from getting too mushy. You want it to sound like you're chewing on rubber kind of when you go to eat it, so you still want it to have a texture and not be mush. And this has helped perfectly. Another thing to keep in mind is your brine percentage. So for a good kraut, a good formula for a good brine is 2%. So the easiest way to do that is to just weigh out your cabbage and then multiply that number times 0 0.02. And then that's how much, and I like to do everything in grams, it's just easier to measure like that. Um, and so that is how you make your brine, which essentially is just water to um, salt. Okay, then you just pour that on top, make sure everything's submerged, put a weight if you have it. If you don't have a weight for years, I just would use a Ziploc bag filled with water and that would push everything down. Um, I've used rocks. Um, I've used cups that could fit inside my mason jars and I fill that with water. I got fancy recently and bought these little weights, but you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. So anyway, that is how I make my kraut. I will let it sit out on the counter for at minimum a week. Now, I will say, when you go to make a second batch, if you don't clean your jar out or anything, you just empty it out, some of those um, bacteria will still be in that jar, so the fermentation process can go a little bit faster. But I would say at minimum about a week, and then you can taste it and see where you're at. Sometimes you might have a little bit of mildew on the top. It's gonna freak you guys out, but it's really not that big of a deal. Like, just scoop it off. Make sure everything's submerged in water. If there's anything growing on top, scoop it off. Like. It is what it is. Sorry if it grosses you out. Anyway, that's kraut. And I like to serve it up with just about everything. Sauerkraut is good on sandwiches. It's good on salads. It's good on a fork in your mouth. Like Sauerkraut's really delicious. It's tangy, it's crunchy. It's a great condiment for anything. So if you want to give making sauerkraut a try, do it. And buying jarred sauerkraut is not the same because most of the time they're just, they add vinegar. So you're not getting all those like lacto bacterial good for your belly things. So give kraut a shot. You will not be disappointed unless you don't like the smell of farts. Then you'll be really disappointed. <laughs> Little update. It is 1.33 and I'm still not hungry from that protein shake. I'm here for meal number two. So, so far this morning I had a protein shake and I also ate probably about an egg and a half to two scrambled eggs just because I was cleaning up the kitchen and the kids didn't finish their scrambled eggs. So I did already actually log that. The app that I use to log all my food to keep track of it today is MyFitnessPal. I have probably a good three to four servings of fruit. It's a mixed fruit. Um, so I have apples, blueberries, grapes, strawberries, pineapple and oranges. So it's just like a big mix of them, okay? I have a whole like medium sized sweet potato. I just roasted those this morning as part of our like meal prep session. I have a cucumber from my garden. I have a little bit of sauerkraut and a little bit of kombucha. As you know, I'm trying to incorporate more of those fermented foods. Um, so yeah, this is my lunch. I wanted to show this to you guys because I wanted to show you the simplicity of a meal. Food is meant to fuel our bodies. It can be nostalgic and it can be delicious and bring back memories of your childhood or just like, like super satiating. But when you really like get down to it, it's literally just to fuel our body. So if you can like get out of your mind the creativity aspect for every single meal um, and just really focus on the nutritional aspect, you're gonna really see more results in your body. Um, so anyway, with that being said, this has been my like new favorite way to eat sweet potatoes and this might gross you guys out, but I leave the skin on. I just eat like this. Look. Whew. Okay. Oh. Whoa. Mm. I roasted this at like 425 for about 40 minutes. And it gets like all these nice sugars start coming out of it. And it literally tastes like it's got like maple syrup or something drizzled on it. Leaving the skin on, adds a bunch of fiber. Oh my God, this is too hot to eat right now, so I'm not gonna even pretend. Cucumber, I'm not even cutting it up. Like, watch how minimal this is. <laughs> I'm on the struggle with today.
Meal number two, we have a total of 471 calories, 69 grams of carbs, 14 grams of fat, and 19 grams of protein. This is 19 grams of vegan protein. I'll see you guys back at dinner time. Okay, if you guys keep a lot of fruits and vegetables out on your counter and you have found a way to get rid of fruit flies, please leave a comment below because I am on the struggle bus with these daggone fruit flies, y'all. This is what I've been doing. I take the shop back and vacuum them up, but it's not working, so. I couldn't do it. I don't know how people can like actually eat all their calories in a day when they're eating clean. Oh my gosh. I am so full. It's 2.30 right now, so I got some time before dinner. And dinner's a salad, so hopefully I will, will not feel as like stuffed. I think that, um, I think the sweet potatoes would did me and that and the protein powder, something, I don't know. Okay, so all that talk about how I'll never be hungry again it is four o'clock and I'm hungry, like hungry. So I made a piece of peanut butter toast. It's, this is my favorite bread. It's the Dave's Killer Bread. It is the seed, the seed one. I can't remember the name of it, but it's got like flax seeds, sunflower seeds, and all kinds of different seeds on it. So I put that with peanut butter, just one slice, and then like about two tablespoons of peanut butter, and then a little drizzle of maple syrup, and that's gonna be my hold me over till dinner snack. I'm gonna snack on this, and then I'm gonna go edit, and then I'll see you guys at dinner. Okay, on to dinner. So we are going to make a salad tonight that is not terrible, okay? It's an enjoyable salad. So the first thing you have to do in order to have a salad that is not terrible is you have to have variety, okay? So not only are we gonna use romaine lettuce for that nice crunch, but we're gonna add in some mixed greens to make sure we get all that nutrition, okay? Pro tip. I'm taking a salad to my mother-in-law's. We're not actually eating at home. And instead of doing a big bowl where the bottom is this deep in salad and then you have like a few things on top, put it in a flat, like a bigger dish like this. That way you have like your thin layer of your lettuce and then you have each layer of topping so that when somebody goes to get a serving, they just grab one spot plus it has a lid. It's a great carrying cake for salad. So that's what we're gonna do. Pro tip. Another thing that you wanna keep in mind when making a salad that isn't terrible is you wanna make sure that you have a variety of color. So, you know, you're just gonna go through your fridge and you're gonna find things that are different colors and then you're gonna add them to your salad. So, this is the base that I have. Look how pretty it is already. All I did was chopped up some romaine as a filler and then I threw in some organic spring mix to, you know, jazz it up. Now let's see what we can do here. One thing I like to always add to my salads is fresh peas, freshly frozen, um, let's see, we have some avocado. That would be a nice addition. Um, some feta, and if I had some pickles, I would probably put that, but I don't have any of that. Let's see here, ooh. A bell pepper, and it's yellow, Got some yellow. And some, these are all from my garden, so we'll do cukes and tomatoes from the garden. Um, let's see, olives. Olives are great and they have a good amount of fat, so we'll add that. And here's some more olives, we'll add some more olives. If I hadn't already had sauerkraut earlier and I wasn't tired of it, I would probably add some kraut. And if I wasn't already adding feta, I would probably add some cottage cheese, but I'm adding feta so I'm not gonna too I don't wanna do two things of dairy. Okay, I think that's it. Oh, and some fresh herbs. I have some cilantro and parsley back here. Another pro tip, this has water in it. Put a little bit of water and tent it and your herbs will stay fresh forever. These are like a week old and they're still fresh. Okay, this looks like a great base. Oh, a carrot. Let's shred a carrot in there for some color. There's no like mad science behind this. You just want to just keep adding stuff. And honestly, the salads that you just keep adding stuff to end up being the best salads. 
Why is my power flickering right now? The government's coming for us. I'm kind of joking. So adding fresh herbs to your salad makes a huge difference. I mean, it really just steps the game up. So I'm going to add a little bit of fresh parsley as well as some of this cilantro. And then we are gonna to top this salad with just some pan sauteed garlic butter shrimp. A key thing to making any salad really delicious is a good dressing. If you're gonna spend all this time making a really healthy, healthy and nutritious salad that's also rich in protein and good fats, spend the time making sure you have a good dressing. So I will vouch for this brand. Primal Kitchen is bomb. And this one tastes really delicious. I got the Caesar dressing. Um, so this is what we'll eat with the salad. Meal number three, which was our salad, has 17 grams of carbs, 31 grams of fat, and 32 grams of protein to come up to a whopping 471 calories. So this is going to leave my total calories for the day under my maintenance. Um, so I'm gonna have a glass of wine with my dinner or a beer or whatever I want because I have enough calories too. So let me give you guys my totals to wrap up the whole day. So total carbs for the whole day is 135 grams. Total fat is 65 grams and total protein is 80 grams. And that equaled up to 1,402 calories. So that is under, that's under my normal maintenance. So I can still add in some calories, but I wanted to show you guys the daily, like a maintenance level. So I actually have room for more calories. So this is actually kind of low. I would wanna actually aim more towards like 16 to 1700. Okay, as I was saying before, my battery just died on me. Um, 1400 calories leaves me with a little bit of wiggle room. So not only do I have some wiggle room for today, but if I end up not eating or consuming all of these calories, they can just carry over through the week. So if I wanna have a few extra drinks on Friday night, I just try to make sure by the end of the week, I'm maintaining a certain range, so. Yes. Also, what am I gonna do with all of these tomatoes? Frankie just came in from the garden with all these and I still have some left over. Y'all, comment down below and give me some ideas on what to do with all these cherry tomatoes. So if this is a big shock to you that we are eating animal products again, make sure you watch this video and it'll explain to you kind of how we're eating now and maintaining our lifestyle. So, see you next video.